They are now. Welcome back to the workshop. And as the title says, we're looking at gear clusters today. So I did an episode on this a while ago. I'll put a link up here in the corner to that episode. And that was about synchro mesh gears and how synchro mesh gears worked. And um, during that episode, we had a lot of questions about dog engagement. A good few people said, oh, Paul, can you talk about dog engagement gear kits? They are prominent enough in the mini scene and I think maybe sometimes people get a little bit confused about them or whether where they can be used and can't be used and how they work. So I am going to talk about that. So back on that video, what we talked about was the gear cluster having sort of three major moving components. We said we had uh, two independent moving shafts. So this is the one bringing the power into the engine. It's then joined up with the lay shaft, which is the one that goes across the back here. So that joins up and then it is running one of the two gears in here or the gear out there, which would be first. This shaft is the output shaft. On there is the pinion and it's driving the crown wheel and it's spinning independently. If you join it to one of these two gears, then you effectively join that that gear there through the lay shaft and into that gear and join it onto that shaft. In order to do that, you need to be able to select gear and we looked at the intricacies of how a synchro mesh gear system works. And a synchro mesh gear system has the dog hub, the dog hub outer and the, what we call balk ring or clutch ring. When we try to select gear, the first thing that happens is the clutch ring tries to bring the two speeds together. So it tries to slow this down to the speed of the output shaft. When those speeds match, these two come together and we get drive. And as you can see, it's a real tight, neat, strong setup. That is what we have in a road car. I pulled out a storage here, a gear kit that I have, which would be of, I suppose, the um, Quaif brand, and it will be from around 2018, 2019, okay? And this is a dog engagement gear kit. Now straight away, one of the things you'll see when you look at this is the gears in this kit are much, 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 much bigger than the gears in the um, Synchro kit. That is allowed, or we can fit in these much bigger gears because we don't have a Synchro hub. What we have is a selector hub, which is this guy that you can see sliding back and forward here. And this fella here is the other selector hub and it looks a bit like a gear, but that's actually reverse. That gear on that selector hub is actually reverse. So when you select reverse, that drives reverse gear. It's a selector hub as well. So dual purpose, a gear and a selector hub. We don't see any balk ring. There is no balk rings in this. How this works, if I take it just apart a little bit, it'll be easier to see. You've got the output shaft moving independent to the gear. In order to get drive to the pinion to drive the engine, you've got to join them together. That is done with a dog engagement ring, which is this fella. As you can see inside there, it's got splines and those splines match perfectly with this uh, free moving shaft. It also has these dog engagement slots in here. And those dog engagement slots are designed to engage with these dog engagement teeth, these ones around here. Now we have dog engagement teeth in the original synchro setup. Dog engagement teeth you can see are here. So you've got the synchro hub inner, which is the, the clutch works on. And then you've got these multiple dog engagement teeth here. If we look at the dog gear kit, you will see that it doesn't have that tapered hub. It just has these four massive dog teeth. Those dog teeth are going to engage with the slots inside there. And that's what gives us drive. So if we put this onto our gear shaft, get these splines to line up. If we put these on here, as you can see with your eyes, <laughs> that's my Murray moment there uh, as he said as you can hear with your ears um, when this selector moves so in other words when you put the thing in gear the selector grabs a hold of this dog ring and slides it forward it either abuts the gear 
or else it will engage the gear depending on the position it's in. So it engages the gear or it can abut the gear. Now, once it's in gear, you'll see this is very crude. Look at the amount of play when it's in gear, okay? That's because there has to be that much play because within a half a turn, you need that to go into gear. If it didn't have that, it would be exactly like when the balk rings start to fail on your synchromesh gear. As you try and select gear, you hear this grinding sound. I can actually probably uh, give you an idea of what that, hear that sound there. That at a higher speed is that crunch you hear. A good few people actually asked me in the last uh, video in the comments, if you're changing down from third into second pole, is that grinding noise you hear, is that a problem with the synchro hub or is that a balk ring problem? 99.9% .9 of the time, that's a balk ring problem. What's happening is the balk ring is not slowing down that gear when you try and engage it. It's worn out. So that gear is just moving at whatever speed it wants and it's not the same as the road wheels. Meaning when this tries to engage, rather than sitting nicely up onto that um, friction surface, what actually happens is you get that grinding noise. If you press it hard enough, you'll force it into engagement and the engine will drive. But normally, the minute anyone hears that grind, they let their finger off the lever because it's a very mechanically damaging sound. With a dog engagement gear kit, because everything has so much play in it, there's so much room in there for it to move, they, it's a less time. So it does kind of clunk into gear rather than grind. And that clunk normally is what we call balking, where that hits that mount and then it, it clunks. So I'll try and give you a demonstration of that. So if I have it there in balk, I'm pressing trying to put this in gear and then you get that clunk. So when, you're driving a car with a dog engagement gear kit, as you change gears, if the road wheel speed is not managing, matching the speed of the gearbox, you'll get this kind of a clunk sensation as it goes into gear. It's not a big problem with these because those gear teeth are so large and are so big that they can take that kind of wear or they can take those kinds of forces. In a synchro gear kit, that doesn't work. Now, the reason why we use dog engagement in a race application, or the most common reason, is actually because it's very simple to take apart. In the case of a synchro hub, taking apart a synchro hub, you've got a lot of components. You've got the synchro outer, you've got the synchro inner, and you've got the uh, synchro ring itself, or the balk ring, as we call it. It's actually an anti-balking ring. Balking is that gears grinding. That, if anyone ever wondered what that is, uh, that is called balking. When the gears don't want to select each other and they grind, they're effectively balking. The reason we call that a balk ring is because it fixes that. It's a clutch ring that fixes balking and makes the gears actually want to go together. Okay, so that's where that term balk ring came from. It's actually, its technical name is a clutch ring because it's actually a, a cone clutch is what it is. Okay. So taking this apart, one of the big problems is in a setup like this, you need what is called a gear detent. And the gear detent's job is to keep this in gear so that while it's driving, it doesn't try and hop out of gear. And the gear detent is done by ball bearings and springs that are held in those three holes there. And they then, I'll try and give you a little close up of this. They then go into these slots or grooves inside the gear. How's that looking, Bill? Can you see that? Yeah. So those slots in there, the ball bearings go into those. So we've got one out there, we've got one in there and one out there. And they are the detent rings. So what they do is they hold that gear. So if you change your car into gear, you'll feel a little bit of resistance. Then it seems to slide easy and then it almost snaps into gear. And that's exactly what you're feeling. You're feeling that uh, synchro hub outer detenting on those balls. So when it's in the middle, it doesn't want to go in or out because it's caught in that groove. Then once you start moving it, it's now sliding with no nothing holding it. And then it catches into the second set of grooves, which holds it in gear. That is a really messy thing to take apart and put together quickly. 
you have to be very, very careful and it takes quite a lot of patience and skill to change it. In a racing application, you might well want to change your gear cluster uh, mid race weekend, or you certainly might only have a week between one race and another, or you know, time is of the essence. So we got rid of that and went for the idea of a dog engagement and to take this apart it's nothing more than just taking that off there's one sear clip there and i can take that gear off put a new gear on put that sear clip back on and i can put that cluster together so i can very quickly strip this cluster and put it back together and there's nothing really to go wrong there's no intricacies where a, a mistake could be made a second reason why dog engagement is used much more commonly in racing than um or, or why we use it is this crunchy clunky gear change can be um, accepted for being able to fit a much bigger gear in like as I said if you look at the size of these gears they're nearly double the width and we get that space back by not needing that synchro hub because you can see if I take out the synchro hub now and I'll show you the size difference so that's a selector synchro hub for a balk ring setup and this is a selector ring hub for a dog engagement gear kit look at the difference in size it's almost double the width so by getting rid of that amount of space in the gear cluster we can make all these gears wider obviously making a gear wider makes it stronger there's one last little intricacy in a dog engagement gear kit that i want to try and see if i can show you and if i um if i bring this up to you now uh, you will be able to see, I'm just going to try and get a little straight edge to show you. This actually will work. Just before I do that, just want to say guys, thank you very much for all of the people who follow the channel. I really do appreciate all the likes, all the shares, all the subscribes and all the comments. If you have any interesting questions about dog engagement gear, gear kits or anything to do with it, put them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them either in the comments or in upcoming videos also if you're new to the channel you're most welcome if you have a little look around we do loads of different stuff whether it's not machining building gearboxes building engines or restoring cars if you like what you see hit that subscribe button and uh, come and join us here in the workshop uh, each week as we talk about different aspects of engineering motoring racing and cars so something to show you here if i grab this little piece of box steel here which has a reasonably square edge if I put it up here, try and put it in the light for you, what you'll see is the edge of that gear or that dog tooth isn't square, it isn't straight. If my finger was out of the way, probably would be easier to show you that. So the actual edge of the tooth is at an angle. So there is an angle between there and the root of that tooth. And that angle is matched in the selector hub. There is also an angle inside there, which acts like a sort of a wedge. So when these actually come together, they are wider at the top and narrower at the base. That is like the detent. Once the drive comes in, these don't want to come apart. I'm actually pressing with quite a lot of force there and they don't want to slide apart. And that is because of the grip that is happening by that wedge. So if I actually put it in there, you'll see it wants to slot down. So I'm just gonna catch it on the very edge there and then I'm gonna turn the gear. See it slot down? That's that wedging effect, pulling in that synchro hub, driving it into the gear. So the, people ask me, can you use these in a road car? There is absolutely no reason why you can't, none whatsoever. There will, however, be a drawback and benefits. Like everything, there's a drawback and there's benefits. Some of the major drawbacks to using dog engagement gear kits in cars the first gear tends to be very, very tall. We do that because we want to get the car moving and then have the best ratio between second, third and fourth when we're racing. However, that's not always very conducive to the road because on the road we use first gear much, much more than we do on the racetrack. On the racetrack we really only use first gear to launch off the line and get down into the first corner. Once we launch the car, we go second, third, fourth, and then it's always second, third, fourth, third, second, fourth, third, second, fourth, third, second, always in that order. We very rarely go back down into first. Maybe 
for a very, very sharp corner on a very hard overtaking maneuver, maneuver, you might use first just to really slow the car down. But generally speaking, no. That means first is tall to get you up to the highest possible speed you can before engaging second, which is not nice in a road car. And if you have a road car with a bit of a tuned engine, a bit of a cam, you know, lighter flywheel and, you know, shorter gearing, that would be really exaggerated and will feel really, really long. Generally speaking, the other major drawback in dog engagement is it's not a smooth change in gear. And if you lift off and accelerate, lift off and accelerate, which you do in a road car or, you know, a weekend warrior car a lot, there's huge amounts of play. So you get a very clunky transmission. You get this sensation of the, everything being worn inside the transmission. It's not, there's play in there on purpose. Not a problem in again in a race or a really highly tuned car that's driving flat out all the time because the gears are in tension all the time. You either lift off to brake or you're accelerating. You're not kind of in between. On a road car, you're obviously accelerating, lifting off at the speed you want to be cruising, accelerating, lifting off at the speed you want to be cruising. And they don't lend themselves very well to that. The other problem is they're not very good at matching speeds. One of the things you do in a road car, which is quite different to a race car, is you might lift off, slow down, and then change down a gear to come around the corner and accelerate out. It might sound similar to a race car, but a lot of the time, the wheels are actually turning much faster than the gears driven by the engine, because when you lift off with the car out of gear, the engine revs will die right down, but the road wheel speeds are still high. That will cause balking, and without a balk ring, it's very, very noticeable. So if you're driving on the road and you really want a dog gear kit, you're gonna have to be able to do uh, RPM matching. It's sometimes referred to as um, heel and toe, and that basically is, as you're changing down gear, you press the throttle as well as the brake to bring the engine revs up which will bring the speed of the gearbox up to match the speed of the road wheels, and therefore you'll have a much easier change of gear. If that's not something you feel capable of, or it's something that you think is gonna be just too messy, then a dog engagement gear kit just wouldn't be for you on the road. And there's plenty of good, strong synchro mesh alternatives. The very last thing I'm gonna talk about is the fact that all dog engagement gear kits will be a straight cut tooth. That is, they'll have this straight across tooth versus if you look at the um synchro mesh gears they are a tooth cut at a helical angle the beauty about a helical cut gear is that all the time there is multiple teeth engaged that is to say that if you put one gear into the other no matter where or what position you're in you will have multiple teeth engaged at the same time in a dog engagement gear kit, or sorry, in a straight cut gear tooth, what happens is you only ever have one tooth engaged at once. So you have the tooth that is driving is engaged and then the other two are not. And what that leads to is this, that free play and movement as the gear moves around. If you look in a dog engagement gear kit, or sorry, in a synchro helical cut, you don't have that. You don't have that play. The teeth are tightly in mesh all the time. What that leads to is a kind of a vibration in the uh, valve or the gear train, which sounds like a whining sound. So you hear this kind of a high pitched squealing whining sound, which is what straight cut gears sound like. Now, some people, absolutely love that sound and if you do then it's not going to be a drawback for you however remember as rpm and road speed goes up the pitch and intensity of that noise also goes up and it can get to the point where in a road going mini at high speed that sound can almost be deafening and it could get very tiresome very very fast so generally speaking what we try and say is Straight cut gears are for weekend warrior type cars or for cars where people actually really like that sound or really want that kind of uh, feel. A dog engagement gear kit, very high horsepower, very high loads, they're very good with that. And where the driver is going to be very mechanically sympathetic, they're going to be able to 
RPM match on gear changes and they're going to understand that sensation of change. So unfortunately, some people just think more expensive and you know better sounding is better it not necessarily always the case are these gear kits stronger yes but the compromise is drivability and feel driving feel how less than nice it's going to be all right next thing we're going to talk about is cooper s gearboxes and the cooper s gearbox we're going to build last thing i want to talk about is gearboxes and one of the next videos we're going to be doing is uh, the gearbox build for our cooper s the engine block is back with us now on an upcoming video very soon we're going to be doing the short motor build for that s motor so we need to start getting the gearbox ready for it because once that short motor is done the next thing to go on is the gearbox and then the cylinder head the person who we're building this for supplied me with two gearboxes he supplied me with a gear casing here which is 22g68 which is an early gear casing from a remote 850 uh, or an engine around that uh, style. It is a three synchro gearbox with um, a reasonably good gear ratio. Now, actually this gearbox has a straight cut racing gear kit in it and a differential. Because if you remember, we needed to get a second donor engine for this Cooper S rebuild because very unfortunately, the original engine blocks, block had a big crack in it. The other gearbox casing that he gave me is this one here, which is 22G128. 22G128 is a gear casing from the later 1275A series non-S. And the only real major difference between this and the actual S gear casing, which is 22G333, uh, would be the gear kit that's inside it, or the, the gear ratios that's inside it. Now, I don't have that gear kit, but I do want to use this gear casing because these are probably one of the best early casings out there. I really like these gear casings. They have really good internals. They're strong. They're well built. They run the proper size idle gear. They use things like a, a sear clip to hold, hold the idle gear bearing in. They're just a really reliable little gear casing that has really proven itself over the years as being strong and reliable. Had, had a conversation with the owner and we agreed to use this gear casing, but what we're going to do is put a Cooper S gear kit in it. So the lay shaft for the Cooper S is a 22G1040 lay gear, which I happen to have here. And I also happen to have the corresponding um, uh, output shaft or third motion shaft for that. And obviously the um, input shaft. So I have that gear kit available and it's in really, really good condition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build that gear kit. It's, in this case, it's actually a 1275 GT gear kit is what it is, but they are pretty much identical to the S gear kit. The ratios, all that sort of stuff, very, 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 very similar. So using that in this gear casing is gonna give our customer a really reliable, good gear casing trying to keep as close to original, original style. We're gonna use an original diff housing and a differential uh, housing, and we're gonna put the molybdenum diff pin in with the uprated bronze um, planetary gears. So we're not gonna put a cross pin diff in it, we're gonna do the uprated differential. And those are really good for a very near standard 1275S engine, which is exactly what we're gonna be building. So that I think is gonna be the best combination. In short order, this gear kit will, this gearbox will be stripped and sent off for vapor blasting. And when you see it on the next video, we will be putting it together, building up this lay shaft, and I'll show you some of the intricacies and tricks with these remote gearboxes that are different to the gearboxes I've built in the past. The gearboxes on the channel that I've built in the past have been the later uh, DAM 5626 gear casing, uh, with, which are the four synchro um, remote, or not remote, uh, rod change type gearboxes. This being a remote, there's some intricacies and there is a few things that I do to these to make them just really, really sweet and has worked brilliantly for me in the past that I'm gonna show you. So in a video in the not too distant future, once we get these casings back from Vapor and we're ready to rock and roll, we're gonna build them up with you guys on the channel and show you all about that. 
I hope you enjoyed this little episode. If you have any more questions about gearboxes or gear casings, any more questions about dog engagement gearboxes, get it into the comment section below, and we'll see you guys on the next one.